There are some 30,000 miles of rivers in New York's Adirondack Park, and many of them have bedrock river sections. The longest of five major rivers in the park is the Hudson River, seen here upstream of O.K. Slip Falls. We will travel west and north upstream on this river for about five minutes to see its variety. You can stop the video and advance it frame by frame, studying any part of this important river close up, as each frame is a 12 megapixel photo, spaced every three feet. Bedrock rivers are constrained by bedrock, remaining in the same river channel for thousands of years, and are different from alluvial rivers, which meander in alluvial plains formed from sediments, regularly changing their path, creating oxbows and cutoff channels in the alluvial deposits. Bedrock rivers go where the terrain directs them, often with cliffs or ledges at corners, following fault lines and fractures over slopes determined by the terrain. They have little or no deposition of silts and clays, as seasonal currents are strong and flush the river regularly, moving sediments and woody debris downstream to slow-moving waters. Only the heaviest rocks and well-rooted vegetation are not swept away in these fast-moving currents. Bedrock rivers also do not have large riverside swamps and bogs. Bedrock rivers have a pattern of alternating pools, rapids, riffles, and runs. They may also have sand beaches, alluvial gravel fans, mussel beds, and gravel bars deposited in slack water. In steep terrain, plunge pools, flumes, chutes, and cascades may be present. At low flow rates, the riverbeds can look like an unruly boulder field with large rocks embedded in the channel and steeper banks of solid rock or boulders and gravel. Smaller rocks tumble downstream in the current, grinding themselves into gravel and sand, polishing exposed bedrock to a smooth finish. Rivers get their water from three sources. The first is precipitation falling directly on the water's surface. Second is precipitation falling on the watershed of tributaries, then making its way as overland flow or groundwater water flow into the tributary before flowing to the river. Third is overland flow or groundwater flowing directly to the river. During dry periods of deep winter and hot summer, groundwater may be the dominant source of water flowing in rivers. Weather events can drop large amounts of water onto watersheds of bedrock rivers in a short period of time. Because these watersheds are quite stable and contain little water storage, most rainwater travels quickly into tributaries or rivers directly, resulting in strong flows. Bedrock rivers are home to trout, darters, chub, dace, sculpins, and many other aquatic species, including mussels, all requiring cold, clean, well-oxygenated water. While these waters may be perfectly suitable for fish by having appropriate water quality, high flow rates and temperature variations make it difficult for fish to remain in place year-round. When water velocity is high, fish can be flushed downstream. During summer low water levels, temperatures can reach lethal levels in pools where fish have become stranded. Loss of tree shade and increasing water temperatures will become more of a concern in future if we lose riverside hemlock trees to the woolly edelgid pest. While the sound of tumbling water and fresh air of a bedrock river corridor like the Hudson first captivates us, we soon learn these rivers offer a fascinating landscape with diverse occupants, many hidden in the swift waters. 
These rivers deserve our study and protection as human disturbances like dams and industrial discharges or natural disturbances like hurricanes and severe storms can cause enormous changes in the watershed and take decades to mitigate. Climate change is also a significant threat.